Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We're coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Uh, the studio is exactly uh, 25 stories directly above the altar at St. Augustine. So if you know the beautiful Green Steeple Church in Waikiki, uh, right on the ocean, that's where we're coming to you from. It's kind of a very sad day here in Waikiki. We had three weeks of incredible surf, and today I look out and it's gone flat. Uh, but I've, I've, just, I've learned that on days that are flat, you paddle out anyway. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. You know, I w was mentioning in the lead up that uh, even on flat days you paddle out because God has a, a, always has an adventure for us. I paddled out uh, probably four years ago out past the surf spot in front of my house called Queens. It's named after Queen Leo Kalani, whose, whose land our condo was built on. And uh, it was totally flat. And there was about, a, I would say, 15 young kids, like between the ages of eight and 18 probably out there frolicking because there was nothing else for them to do. They're diving around and swimming and messing with each other. And out in the distance, I saw spinner dolphins. Now, this is different than spinner sharks for you guys on the East Coast. These are dolphins. They're littler dolphins, and they're playful, and they spin. So I paddled out, I guess, about a two-thirds of a mile to where they were, and I knew that if I paddled on one side and then the other that I could kind of direct their path. And I, I paddled from one side and then the other, and the dolphins just kind of started heading uh, in the direction I was shepherding them. And uh, I got them to go right through the Queen's uh, Reef, the surf spot there where the children were. And the children are yelling, Uncle Bear, Uncle Bear, this is so cool. And then they started playing with the dolphins, and they started chasing the dolphins down towards Diamond Head. I stayed with them for about a, a half a mile because I figured I should kind of watch out for them, but these kids are better watermen than I am, and they just had the time of their life. And so in your spiritual life, when there's times when it seems like nothing's happening, sit down and have your time of prayer. Uh, take that time with the Lord. You know, one, at one point in my life I thought, um, you know, in those times when you don't sense the presence of the Lord, or you're praying the liturgy of the hour and the psalm that you're reading doesn't seem to have anything to do with you, but you go through that discipline, uh, that, you know, it's like here in, here in Waikiki, even on a somewhat cloudy day, people can get, get scorched by the sun. It can just scorch them. And I was thinking, that's what prayer, prayer is like when things are dry, but you still are having your prayer time. You still paddle out. You still send, spend some time with God. Um, you don't know it, but you're getting a spiritual suntan. And I thought I was so smart to think about that. I thought, man, I'm getting so good at coming up with the good examples. And then I would say about seven years later, I'm reading St. Augustine, and he did it to me again. He'd already thought about it, already wrote it. You know, don't ever think you've come up with an original thought because St. Augustine already came up with it. <laughs> but anyway, we're here today with a friend of mine from, well, I'm going to get to know more about him, uh, from the Idaho area. Uh, Eddie Trask. Aloha, Eddie. Glad, glad to have you with us on the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you, Bear. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Eddie has his own uh, podcast. What's the name of the podcast again? The podcast is Catholic Recon. Catholic Recon. That's a, that's a Recon's a cool word. You know, it's like reconnaissance, reconciliation. That's, yeah, exactly. That's right. And then for my in my case, it stands for revert and convert. So we focus on testimonies from both both camps from both camps yeah yep. yeah i think about I, that just makes me think about israel out in the wilderness you know the encamped around the around the, the tent of meeting the the, the, port, the the portable temple but you know we were we were out there with salt and light radio a couple weeks ago seems like a few weeks ago and yeah. it was just so it was it, it was just so cool it was just the coolest uh experience there uh what what i know we saw each other was it at the, we, we saw each other twice i think right at the gala and then at the cigar night. I'm trying we to didn't remember. make it to the gala, but the cigar night was. Oh, okay. We absolutely see. fascinating. That was great. So we see where your priorities are. <laughs> 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 yeah. I guess so. Yes. 
Yeah, we went up to Salt and Light Radio and we spoke in Twin Falls, and they didn't tell me there was this incredible golf course down in the down by the river there where where um, Evil Knievel attempted his jump. We went up the, the the venue was right on that cliff, and I don't know how many hundreds of feet down it is straight down. And I, oh, if I just come a few hours earlier, I could have had a, not gotten nine holes in. And then we had our time in Boise with the wonderful people there. My wife Cindy led the women, about fifty of the women in the hula. Uh, and of course we spoke and then and then I told the guys the Knights on Bikes guys there hey uh, uh, why don't we uh, do a little ride while I'm there okay yeah just for a few hours because I'm going to be real busy and probably pretty tired next thing you know we're on an eight hour run up and uh, I forget the Payette River canyons oh my goodness and uh, there were 50 of us (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and and it was eight hours instead of three hours, and then we had that cigar night. Tell them t- that, that there were about seventy. Tell tell the men tell tell them about the cigar night that we had there. Yeah, the cigar night was just. I say it's fascinating because it's one thing to get men together and just start chatting. It's completely different to have someone like Bear stand up and start challenging people in their prayer life and their spiritual life in in general. And when we all walked away we were smiling i'm not exaggerating we were smiling because for many of us we had not been out for a while in my case you know my newborn was i think six weeks old maybe even five weeks old at the time and i checked with my wife you sure you sure (laughs) this is gonna work out she said it was just great she wanted to get rid of you she wanted to get rid of you (laughs) no come on now no she she that was great and just connecting, reconnecting with a lot of men that I've met over the years. It was really special, honestly. Okay, let's just tell, let's just tell it the way it is. The most interesting part of that evening is I forget the gentleman's name there who helps do the do the uh, uh, men's conference. What's his name again? Oh, Travis. Yeah, let's Travis talk. Travis Wingo. Let's just talk about Travis Wingo. First of all, that name sounds like he should be like a uh, Wyatt Earp character from the Old West. <laughs> and he looks like it when you when you meet him. Except for tell us what – let's hear it on national, international radio. Oh, it goes out on man, Sirius. he's going he's gonna to punch me. It's going to be in the shortwave radio into Russia. It's going everywhere. Yeah. This, tell us about what Travis, uh, his manliness uh, that night at the, at the cigar, cigar Well, this night. Well, is, this is a man that's so secure in who he is <laughs> that I, I, have, I have to respect it. There's no way I could pull off a one-piece American flag – uh, outfit. I don't even know how to describe it. Well, let's it call it a that. onesie. It's something a little infant would wear, right? But it, yeah, or, yeah. Or but toddler. he's the guy. I mean, <laughs> seriously, I aspire to be that comfortable in my own skin. It's really, I, I mean that. It's so funny. People walk in. It's he's oh. like, yeah, what's up? What's up? <laughs> this is what I wear on Friday nights. Get you. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great being there. There was it was it was standing room only. There was only we maxed out at seventy. That was the most we were allowed to have there, and it was really cool to see the men just sitting around and uh, having that cigar and a shot of whiskey. And yeah, everyone was moderate in their behavior as far as of drinking course. goes. Yeah. But uh, and the cigars. What was the name of that that uh, that cigar the place? Vault. The Vault. The in Vault in Meridian, Idaho. Yeah, the Vault. It's where so. the, it's you know when you go to Boise. Uh, my wife said, there's men here. The men here act like men. You know, they're not excusing their, 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 being, you know, their existence for being, uh, for being, having the male gender. You know, they're men. They act like men. They, they're, they're bold. They're, they've got a, a, a real great heart. And then there's that bond that we, that we saw formed there. What were the, do you, do you remember the highlights of uh, just a couple of the things that came out of there? Well, for me, here I am not going for any agenda whatsoever. And I made some business connections and people that want to be on my YouTube channel because they have their testimonies they want to share. I reconnected with someone at Salt and Light Radio who I adore. And who's that? Who's that? Who's that? That's Brian Howell. Oh, now we're going to talk about Brian. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> the Brian. man is um i've got so much respect for that man and yeah it was just great to reconnect even if it was brief you know how these events work yeah. even if it's two minutes here two minutes there well then that triggers an email the following day let's grab coffee let's grab lunch which well, Brian, speaks to every go, go ahead. ahead i'm sorry i'm sorry i was well, just gonna say it speaks to everything that you were talking about which is get out of isolation 
get, Any- get into, even if it's not a men's group per se, get with other men and chat. And usually it leads to some chat about spirituality. So, well, yeah, you know, if you have, you know, having whiskey or having a barbecue, um, I always, I always think of, um, uh, you know, I have a group of men that I would got together with in Florida, uh, where we would have breakfast about every couple of weeks. And then here in Hawaii, I have these brothers and my wife is so sweet. Uh, she opens up all the windows in the condo. We have this special air purifier. She lays out a spread of, uh, of, of poo-poos, as we call it here in Hawaii, uh, appetizers. She flees the scene, and about five of us sit here, and we, uh, and we have cigars, and we talk. And it's just, it's, just, it's just just men getting together and having the ability to encourage each other, but yeah. also challenge each other. And just to have, just to, just to have that, 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 that manly that manly bond but brian howell the voice when i when i first started my radio show i traveled to about 20 different radio stations to ask them if they would carry my show then ewtn said don't bother we're going to carry your show and and uh, it'll be on our it'll eventually got onto their a feed so all the stations get it but i walked into the the chambers of of boise salt and light radio and i heard this voice from the bellows of the deep in the recesses of the station and i go that's a radio guy (laughs) Yes, and then and then I walk in. And he's about like what ten feet tall. He's so so tall. Yeah, he clocks in just under nine feet. So so he's, uh, he's something like that. Uh, but he <laughs> but my wife, uh, uh, you know, wanted to get the women to come up and learn the hula, and they were a little bit bashful, a little bit shy. And then then Brian gets on the microphone and says, "If if we can get fifty women up here, I will do the hula too." And so, uh, so being the good sport that he was, he stepped in and did that. But speaking of uh, nine feet tall, uh, we're gonna we want to talk story about some of your history. And we only uh, when we get back, we're gonna hear this man, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie, was known, famous for his three point shot in basketball. So yeah. we're gonna talk a little bit about his great uh, his great athletic prowess uh, when we get back. Uh, Eddie, if they want to find you, where do they find you? It's just best to go to my website, eddietrask.com. But spell uh, Eddie Trask. Trask. So E-D-D-I-E-T-R-A-S is in Sam, K is in kite, dot com. You've, you've chosen a great uh, uh, thing to, to interview people about. There's nothing more. Uh, uh, the converts are just so bold and so powerful and reverts so they say sometimes even more so this is bear wasnick we'll be right back with the bear wasnick adventure hey man i don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter you get free video content including the bear wasnick radio show video version on youtube before it even airs on ew10 and you can follow us on all of our social media go to deepadventure.com and subscribe get your free stuff and if you're watching on youtube don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell don't miss out this is a warning the Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We have our co-adventure guide, Eddie Trask, is with us from the Idaho area. I just want to invite everyone, the men, I'm speaking to you. Uh, we have Bear's Man Cave. It's really something that's evol- uh, developing and evolving into something that's very powerful. We have men that are members of a secret Facebook group, um, but it's a lot more than that. Uh, you have to go to d- deepadventure.com to join, and then we will foster you in or sponsor you into that to that secret Facebook group, but we join together and we, and uh, we uh, challenge each other with our quotes, with inspirational uh, uh, ideas, and we ask each other for prayer, and we just get real with each other. And then at twice a month, we have Zoom video meetups, and we have a mentoring program that is a, that you can uh, that can be made available to you. Uh, going through the seven virtues, and and my new newest book will be coming out soon, the Twelve Rules of Manliness. Um, and we're and we and this fall we're launching our 
our um, School of Manliness, which is which the man cave is part of. So go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave and, and join the pack. Even if you're a member, of, a member of a men's group, as a lot of our men are, a lot of our men are members of things like That Man Is You and Exodus 90 and other things like that. But um, the thing about being part of Bear's Man Cave, if you're getting, you're getting input from people all over the country, all over the world, so you kind of you kind of get this the sense of what the Holy Spirit's up to, and, and the other thing about it is a lot of our men that are part of a men's group are part of a men's group because they joined the man cave and and they said you know what we don't have a men's group in my church and I just tell them flat out it's your fault if you don't have one it's your fault make it happen so they've started their own different types of men's groups so go to go to deepadventure.com and become a member of Bears Man Cave we have Eddie Trask with us and we were going to talk about we we're talking about Brian Howell. Well, I never got to ask him, Eddie, if he was if he played basketball. But if he didn't, I bet his coach is mad at him. The coach? No, he did. <laughs> he, he, he did. He did. Yeah, uh, I'm assuming power forward or center. At, yeah, at I would think so. Point. Yeah, it's not so. typical to see. Too I would want to be that height. I would want to be with him when his elbows started flying and he's, you know. <laughs> but but you you had this great reputation for um, not setting your feet. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I would. Yeah, my my job all through high school, or well, at least my junior and senior year, find my position at the three point line, wait for the point guard to drive to the center, kick it out, drain it. Every time I would drain it, my feet were stable. They were equal. You know, right. anytime I would miss it, I was kicking my left foot out, and then. Like I mentioned earlier, didn't your mama you, teach? Didn't your mama teach you better? Never kick your left foot out. That's I only the hokey know, pokey. Man. That's just the hokey pokey you do that with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so and then there were times where I'd pump fake and then kind of drive, and that's not my specialty. So I would botch the play, and my coach would yell, "You know, know your role." So for the longest yeah. time, we would all joke about that to each other. Know your role. Don't go outside of what you are geared for. What talents you have yes you can branch out at times but if you're not ready to branch out stay where you are and do your job basically that's so cool as far as like when paul talked about the body of christ there's so many different members with different gifts and talents Absolutely. And, I, and uh um you know i know when i i i have a, i have a teaching gift you know i can i'm a pretty good teacher but uh when i go out in public you know i do my ocean sunrise catechism but when i'm out speaking my dad told me, evangelize. Don't teach, evangelize. That's your time to evangelize. So he kept, you know, he said, set your feet, you know, basically. Yeah. And by the way, when it comes to the hokey pokey, your left foot, you know, the challenge that you have with your left foot, putting it in and putting it out. Is it true? Is the hokey pokey really what it's all about? Just want to... <laughs> Just I, I actually, it, there's no way that's what it's all about. That's okay, all so, I'll say. I well, don't know what else is, needs let, to be involved, but that's not everything. Okay, well, let's backtrack and let's hear a little bit about your personal journey with the Lord. Sure. So, raised cradle Catholic. My mom, cradle Catholic. My dad was baptized Lutheran. He converted when I was 10 years old. And you know what did it? A yard sale had a book for sale. Story of a Soul, the autobiography oh. of St. Therese. Yeah. He told me, I didn't know this at the time. I don't even know what I knew at the time, to be honest with you. But this is many years later. He said, do you realize that by the time I finished that book, I said, that's it. I'm becoming Catholic. That's case closed. So he's in RCIA when I'm a 10-year-old, 11-year-old. And I have fond memories of the, he joined the Knights of Columbus. We did the pancake breakfast thing. How about fish fries? Was, I, we didn't have fish fries. All I, right. I think it oh, might yeah, have this, to do with access is, to good fish in that market. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and Idaho eats meat. <laughs> no, this, <laughs> yeah, was, this was in, this was outside of Fresno, California. Oh, so. dude, I was, ra I, I spent many years in Madeira. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah so I was bor born and raised in Kerman, to be specific. As a child, so, my dad was going to Fresno State Teachers College, oh, back when it was called that. Yeah, yeah. So what a small world. Yeah. But yeah, I have fond memories of that. And then he was in the choir. But long story short, so re I received the sacraments that were available to me. And by the time I was out of high school, I was, like many, just not in the church, got into college, and started drinking 
Did, did you drink, was your drinking because of those missed uh, three pointers? Uh, my <laughs> my drinking, it was it was lack of coping skills. To be completely uh, honest with you, yeah. I didn't know how to deal with a number of things, including my uncle uh, who was. So I lived in the Bay Area. Long story short, from about age eighteen to twenty two, my uncle uh, took his own life when I was twenty two. And I used that as a reason to drink heavily and to basically escape reality. Even though I was functioning at work, I was the type of guy that come the weekend had no no control, and it was just a binge binge fest. Oh. So, yeah, that's what? it's hard to obviously admit that, but then when you can look back and realize why you were doing those things. I just have a heart to help people that might have some coping issues. Well, you know, and also, there, you think of those people, um, you know, I, I never really drank until after I gave my life to the Lord when I was 19, I think, and I felt the liberty to do that. But yeah. uh, you see some people when they're younger, that it's cool to drink. You know, like I yeah. hear people at the beach on Saturday morning, I'm up at 7 Dawn Patrol, and they show up at 10, and they want to brag about how much they drank. Like, that's an accomplishment, you know? Yeah. And it's cool, but then eventually that catches up with you, right? And you're like, it sure it's does. a dead end. How did you it shake will... that? So, wow. In 2017... I was on a walk and we can backtrack later into how this unfolded, but I felt the Holy Spirit confront me on a walk and hit my spirit very, very radically. And I heard a voice in my spirit saying, you're going to confess to your wife. And so turns out I had been drinking out in the open, but then once I was married, kind of in secret and I was in an industry, the wine industry that kind of um had an avenue for that so i was right. doing all this stuff in secret including viewing pornography and i confessed it all or i began to confess it all that very night that i was confronted by the holy spirit and that radically changed our lives and set us set us on the trajectory that we are currently realizing well, it, right now we'll talk more about that we're talking with eddie trask his his show is called what again your podcast it's Catholic Recon. It's so cool. It's it's reverts and converts. That's what the recon is for. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We just want to give a shout out to our mama bears out there. We have a special, uh, special part of our weekly newsletter that's designed just for you, and we're developing a new Facebook page just for our mama bears out there. And, uh, you know, there's nothing more fierce, uh, more fiercely protective than a mama bear of her young. And, uh, and we respect what you, your, all of the prayers that you pray for, the, for the, the men in your family, too. And we know that a lot of our ministry power comes from your prayers. So, mama bears, you're welcome to join uh, the mama bears at deepadventure.com. I also want to mention um, it's kind of lame here in Hawaii because those trade winds are blowing. You're walking on the beach and you look out and you go, well, is it January or is it July? What time of year is it? I mean, it literally does happen. <laughs> 
for all of you that would like to escape, get a little, you know, put off winter for a little bit longer, on December 7th through the 11th, we're having our Deep Adventure Quest retreat in Waikiki Beach. All of the retreat elements will be either at the church right next door to us, which is right on the beach, or we'll be on the beach uh, sharing with you, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the retreat part and the conversations that we'll have. You'll be close enough to a very safe place on the water where if you have children with you, you can kind of keep your eye on them while the retreat is even going on, and people will kind of take turns taking care of the kids. So so this is for the men. It's for the women. Uh, it's for the ohana. Um, it's for uh, the religious uh and uh, we will have special elements for just the men. We'll have some cigar times with just the men. But I uh, want, want to invite you to go to deepadventure.com and click on the button. You'll see it. It's sometimes hard to spot about uh, the Deep Adventure Quest. It starts on December 7th, which is Pearl Harbor Day. We're talking with Eddie Trask as our co-adventure guide. And Eddie uh, kind of hit a wall uh, with drinking and then also uh, falling into pornography, which, by the way, every man that I know of, almost every man that I know of, has to fight that battle. Uh, especially these days. It's like uh, pornography and that whole realm is on the attack. Uh, it used to be when I was young, if, if you found a Playboy, it was, it, was like a, it was like very rare. You'd have to really try hard to find something like that. And now it's an all-out assault on our youth. And so especially for our younger men, um, we need to give you the, give you the tools to, uh, to fight that, and you need to fight it. And you can do that by really being in the company of other men to help encourage and challenge you. So Eddie, so you, you, you had started drinking, you were married, and, uh, and you had started down this path of drinking too much, and then uh, the, uh, another addiction kind of came in, in, and that was pornography. How did, how did the Lord free you from that? You said you started by talking to your wife? This, yeah, the, the night I confessed, I kid you not, since that day, September 5th, 2017, I have not had a drink and I have not viewed anything since that date, which I admit, I don't take that lightly. I don't say like, you can too, you, you know, you can just pray and everything will be great. It is a grace that was given to me and it's a miracle, honestly. But those things ended when I obeyed the Holy Spirit and confessed to my wife, which was the most difficult thing I can think of it was it was a very 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 challenging there's nothing even in that realm where i wasn't even i was so closed off and i was so secretive i didn't realize what i was hiding until i opened my mouth and oh. then the floodgates opened it became a very unhealthy process i call it scrupulosity even though i wasn't confessing to a priest i didn't know how to shut my mouth i i kept feeling convicted to share even more like here's my life sweetheart here's everything i've done it's like all this baggage i say it in the book i, I wrote a book and i guess we'll get into that as well but i say that when we got married, I checked my baggage. She brought hers on board. I knew who she was. She didn't know who I was. She thought she knew who I was, but I didn't tell her about my weaknesses, my secret addictions, all these things. Those were just, they were checked. So she didn't mm. know. So all of a sudden she gets to over the, you know, from 2017 to 2019, which is the period that my book covers, she was getting to know the real me and watching me fight these spiritual battles. And we learned how to pray together. God was healing our marriage in a very unorthodox way. <laughs> that's for well, sure. Well, that's what, well, so your, uh, your experience then also, uh, you, but you had come back to the church by that time or w was that part of your journey back? Oh, uh, great question. So about 16 months into that journey from the first time that the Holy Spirit, I say, confronted me, my wife came to me and at the time we were going to a non-denominational church. So I had fully left the church and she was raised uh, Seventh-day Adventist and she had left that church when she was probably 15. So we get married. We're going from church to church. We went to a Baptist church for a while, then a Pentecostal church. Then we ended up at a non-denominational church. I went through altar calls, got back in the baptismal tank. I mean, it was, I didn't know what was going on. I just was, I'd say, trying something. <laughs> but my wife came to me and she said, the woman that spoke this week 
contradicted our pastor from last week completely. And I said, really, I didn't, I didn't catch that. And it was on the issue of healing. The woman that was speaking was implying that if you don't have enough faith, you're not going to be healed. And God's will is that everyone be healed completely. And our pastor the week before was speaking more like in terms of Catholic theology, truly, which mm -hmm. is the Lord will permit what he permits. You don't understand the greater good in, in that situation. You don't understand why you suffer like you suffer. At the time, my wife, and she still does, she has rheumatoid arthritis. So it was a big topic for us. So that contradiction led me to start researching upstream. I was tracing all of a sudden all these denominations, where they came from. Oh, that came from this movement. Oh, that movement came from this movement. I end up at the years of the Reformation and I couldn't go any further. And then that around that time period, I felt God confronted me again. And it was in a very interesting moment. I was leaning over the toilet sobbing because I was so confused about where am I supposed to go? What denomination? Where's the truth? And I felt very clearly in my spirit that God wanted me to pursue researching Catholicism anew because I didn't know my, my faith from uh, my childhood. I was just clueless. And that led <laughs> very quickly, uh, six weeks later, after researching all my objections and realizing the early church and so much beauty, uh, I returned to Mass six months after that. My wife had been doing her own studying. She said, I'm going to join RCIA. Our marriage was convalidated. The kids were baptized. What about when you first went back to confession? Oh, man. That was... 15 to 20 years of grave sin that I was pouring out and it was beautiful honestly it was so <laughs> I can't even describe it uh, the priest at that parish just said ah. it was something to the effect of that was good that was beautiful like you're you clearly want to go the other direction. There's contrition. It's a heavy, <laughs> a heaviness that had been on my heart for a long time. And it just felt great. You to feel walk that moment. Yeah. 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 You feel that moment of absolution. I of freedom. I'm like, you can go to a psychiatrist or a bartender and you can tell them everything, but it's only yeah. a priest that, that has that gives you, provides that uh, in persona Christi that sacramental grace that really liberates you. I, I tell people it's like skydiving. You know, when, you, when you're, you're on your way in the car to the, to the jump location, uh, you're nervous. I don't care how good of a skydiver you are, you're nervous. Your palms get sweaty. <laughs> it's kind of like on the way to going to, to the church to confess. Yep. And then, and then you, you, you walk in, especially when you first do this, and they, they, uh, they, you, you put the, the parachute on your back and you go, this is real, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And then you get on the plane, and your heart starts racing, and uh, and um, and then you and then you make that leap. And when you make that leap, I, I've seen so many people jump, were scared scared to death, a look of total terror. And then you see the video camera. The moment they jump out of the plane, there's this look of determination from the video camera, and then they jump out and they just light up. And there's that free fall experience when it's pure oxygen pouring right into your cells. You don't even have to breathe, you know. And then the canopy opens, and you have a beautiful perspective, a beautiful view. And when you land, you're like, you feel like you can conquer the world. And that's the closest I can share what it's like to go and have a good confession. We'll be right back. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Eddie Trask from, uh, he's a cowboy from Idaho. Everybody in Idaho is a cowboy, <laughs> as legend would have it. We'll be right back. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. 
Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to welcome you to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you can press this button and you can subscribe to our newsletter. And when you do, every week you get a uh, an email on Saturday mornings of the radio show that's going to be on EWTN that night, but you get a YouTube version so you can see what our – if you could see how handsome Eddie was, and, uh, you know, and, and he, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's a, a cowboy from Idaho, uh, you know – it, it may, it, anyway, I'm messing with him, but actually, <laughs> he's a fairly good-looking guy. But if you if you uh, if you um, want to watch the video version, it's really cool. And then you can share that. Hey, Mama Bears, you can share that a uh, YouTube video with the uh, with the men in your life. Kind of encourage them to go deeper in the Lord. A lot of men have come to the Lord because of YouTube videos being shared. And also, we want to let you know our TV show Long Ride Home is on EWTN Network. But also, if you become a Patreon donor, you can get all of the episodes sent to you, uh, including the new ones before they even air on EWTN. So consider that too. Eddie, so you, we were talking story, uh, and I, I kind of interrupted you. So uh, you went to confession, and it set you free. And then what, what books were you reading when you said you were studying the faith? What did you study? Wow. So Augustine, Confessions. I got into just some early writings of Irenaeus and Justin Martyr. Oh, man. And, You're hitting all my and, hot buttons, too. Yeah, and Polycarp. It was actually, yeah. there was a book that my dad had given me years before, uh, and I pushed it aside. It's when the church was young. I always oh, yes. forget. Yeah. yeah, I always forget the author, but that chapter about Polycarp really changed things for me. And aside from that, honestly, I did a lot of research into the Catholic answers. I wanted to see which scripture they were citing to defend various doctrines. And I realized, and I say this on my YouTube channel, I recorded a long testimony, like a 45 minute testimony, my own story. I started to soon realize, okay, if all these groups of people can cite scripture, what's the source of their interpretation? Where did it start? Because we could play that game until we're blue in the face. I mean, I see right. debates currently on YouTube where people are saying, that's not what that verse means. The other person says, that's not you what know, it means. <clears throat> I got to tell you, Eddie, I know I, um, it's, it's very interesting to me when i am um, been part of, of Protestant Bible studies. Uh, people will, well, I think it means this, and I think it means that, and I yeah. think it means that. You don't hear that at a Catholic Bible study. That's right. You hear, well, I'm, like St. Augustine said this, or the Catechism says this, or you're quoting people that are probably a lot smarter than we are. I know Martin Luther's big thing was that the Bible's easy to read. Anybody can read it and understand what it, and, and the Holy Spirit can speak to him. But then Zwingli and him, uh, you know, his, co his partner in crime, uh, within two years, they had this big fight in the, in, about what the Bible says, and so they didn't cooperate with each other. Well, yeah, and, and I mean, as if the Anabaptists didn't have scriptures. I mean, they were at odds, and he was very clear about being at odds with the Anabaptists, Luther. Right. So, yeah, it was just, I, I started to see how illogical some of this was, how futile it was if you just start tracing, or you're going off of one person. Like, even when you cite Augustine, it's in communion with the deposit of faith. It's not Amen. a man on an island right. that's saying this is truly what it means. You just needed to see these other verses in conjunction. Well, you know, Jesus is a pretty smart guy, you know. Yeah. And in the Bible it says he was a technon, he was a builder. Doesn't mean he worked yeah. with wood. Probably he didn't. He probably, oh, worked, stone? With, probably worked with stone. Cause he's probably yeah. ripped, man, probably really strong. Um, and uh, he was probably a pretty smart guy. And he, he said, he, you know, the only thing we know that he ever built was a church. You know, he said, I will build my church. And probably when you're kind of a smart guy and, and you want to build a church, you probably have uh, 
uh, you want to have a, a teaching authority. You don't just leave yeah. it to, like, outside in front of my house right now at the Marriott down below. My wife and I have been watching for almost a year and a half this reconstruction of this pool area and this bar area down below us. And it's just like ants running around and, like, doesn't seem like anything's getting done. <laughs> They're probably on their fifth manager um, in, in reinterpreting the architectural drawings. It's pretty hysterical, actually. But that's what it's like when you don't have a teaching authority. But the Lord said, you know, gave the keys of the kingdom to the prime minister of the church, uh, uh, Peter. And, and we have this beautiful catechism. You know, everyone should read that every day. But, so um, true. Yeah. I lo- I, uh, tell, us, tell us about the title of your book. So, yeah, it's Confession All. It's based on a confessional, and I broke it into Confession All because of the scrupulosity where you're, you're confessing literally everything you've done. I hit, my, I, I hit my finger yeah. when I was hammering and I cussed and, you know, like the, the, you get focused on the, the little things and you don't deal with the real heart issues. Yeah, it's just a... Uh, yeah, not good. Very unhealthy. But again, God, through that, he he knew something much better was going to come from it. But anyway, the subtitle is A Humiliating, Tormented Pilgrimage to God's Will. And I say that because Praise there was a lot, there a lot of spiritual warfare involved in those first, shoot, first nine to 12 months. And I was taking my guilt, my shame, and in effect, putting it on my wife, which is not uncommon in these circumstances, the wife that has to carry the burden, much like parents when they get divorced, they pass the burden that they may have onto their children. I've heard that many times. Well, that that, that brings up a question. You don't necessarily recommend that every man's having these issues. Never. Go and tell his wife. Uh, it I'm might not, be, go, I, go to, go to make, the con, probably go to the confessional for most men, and then, then ask your correct. priest what to do. Yeah, it's a good. good yeah, thing. I make that, or I try to make that clear in the preface. In no way is my story something that would be advisable. It's just my story, and yes. I felt unbelievably convicted to share it as upside down as it is. Yeah. So, yeah. so your book, uh, Confession All. You know, Eddie, God's really got His hand on you. In a beautiful way, and I just, uh, I just, uh, we, just, I love it when I see uh, a new man step up to the front lines. You know, you've been, you've been, you've been, in, you've been in the faith now, back to the faith now for what three or four years or something like that. Um, just, just two years. And what I love about it is that you didn't just come and become part of the church. You've stepped up to the front lines. We need more men like Eddie, who, uh, who will not not be in the background you know you think about a walled city and uh uh not being not being protected by the wall but stepping into the breach as that one bishop in arizona says uh stand your ground st- step into the breach and then take new ground and eddie that's you and we need more we need more men like you that'll maybe like i said they don't have a men's group at the church start one you, you're, you're, God's given you the, a gift of writing, and, and so you, you wrote a book. And, and when you write that book, it kind of, it kind of, it kind of crystallizes your thinking, and, and then you have a, a chance to go teach. You know, I wonder how is, have you begun to teach different places yet, or where is that in your walk? N- not yet. I mean, I've been on, I've been able to share some of my story on different radio shows like yours and on yeah. YouTube videos and things like that. So I guess those are teaching moments. Actually, you reach a lot more people. <laughs> but in oh, your own, video? Yeah. yeah. In, in your own walk with the Lord, do you have a men's group yet that you're a part of that you can begin to work with? Mentor yeah. So I, I did Exodus 90. I have a very, very strong community here of men, many of which were at that cigar night. Yeah. And then in addition to that, I just joined the CMLA, if you're familiar with the Catholic yeah. Men's yeah. Leadership did, Alliance. Did you, did you make it there this week, this last week? I didn't make it. Yeah, I, 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 for some reason, I didn't get the notice that it was being held because they were iffy about it. And then I heard it was held. Uh, basically, I was it in, uh, probably in Texas when I was there. Hey, we got to go, Eddie. But listen, oh, okay. um, <clears throat> Eddie, we really, I really mean it. Those of us involved in the new evangelization, whenever an, a new man steps up and says, count me in. You know, um, it, it just means the world to us to see that the harvest is, is plentiful. In our ministry, deepadventure.com, the Bears Man Cave, what we do is we get men there like the Cave of Adullam, David's Cave of Adullam, where you have all the misfits showed up, 
people who owed money or were on the run from the law. But they formed each other, and God formed them into the mighty men of valor. And then those men in the cave, we work with them to become leaders so they can uh, work within their own communities to develop their own, using their own unique talents and gifts, develop uh, men's groups and things like that. So um, and it's it's it, there's such a great harvest. There's oh, It's overwhelming how many um, men are, are ready and, and just need an opportunity to have someone like you step, it, step up into the breach and kind of, guide them the way that you came. We're talking with Eddie Trask. Where can they find you? EddieTrask.com. And you can also have to plug HeroicMen.com. Exceptional platform for men. And also you've got, um, uh, the book is called what again? Confession All. So they can go to my website and find everything about my ministry. And your, give us your, your website one more time. EddieTrask.com. E-D-D-I-E-T-R-A-S-K. You uh, we, we we got to go. You know, I've got a friend of mine here from from California. On my on my, I met him. <clears throat> I was uh, I was on a catamaran. We were sailing. You know, one of these sailing cats you get on the beach here. We went on about an hour long sail, and then as we sailed back in, I thought I, I don't want to come go in. So I dove off that cat and swam over to another catamaran that was just going through just a, just going through the lineup. The and because um, I knew the captains of both of those boats, and he pulled me up. And I meet this guy, Don from California. He's a biker, and just uh, uh, we became great friends. And so he and I, are, he he's here with his. Now he has a wife and two children, and uh, we're about to go surfing. So I got to go. <laughs> Thanks so much, Bear. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, my brother. Aloha, Eddie. All right, take care. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.